Before we start this video, I gotta tell you, we are doing a giveaway over on my Instagram. What are we giving away? Well, my friends over at Triple Fat Goose sent me this rain jacket and they want to send you one as well. So head on over to my Instagram, find a photo of me in a rain jacket, follow the instructions, and hopefully you will also be a proud owner of a nice new rain jacket. And let's move on with the video. In this video, I'm going to show you how I create very real looking rain in photos. It's a pretty simple process in Photoshop, but if you don't have time for it, if you don't have Photoshop, I've created a Gumroad link down in the description where you can download the PNG files to lay over top of your image, and hopefully that'll speed things up for you. All right, let's go take some photos. So we're here in the forest um, and I realized on my way over I forgot my spray bottle um, but thankfully there's like a dollar store nearby and of course I go to the dollar store everything's like blocked off except the food aisle so I'm like okay maybe if I go in the right aisle I'll be able to find a spray bottle. I go into the baby aisle thankfully they have a spray bottle. I get to the cash register and the woman's like sorry you can't buy that and I was like but I bought it in the baby aisle she's like it doesn't matter. Sorry Matt your raindrops aren't essential. <laughs> my raindrops are not essential. <laughs> Wow, it's totally raining right now. Is it working? Yeah. <laughs> Zip up the coat. So you get that real, those real nature shots. Is it bokeh or bokeh? Connor, hey. thanks for your help. No problem. I appreciate you. Yeah. You can follow Connor on uh, Instagram. He's really good with a camera. Um, I heard Cannon shared one of his photos one time. All right, you know what time it is? It's time for the tutorial. Before we start the tutorial, you my ginger ale. All right, here we are in Photoshop, just a heads up. I'm not a pro in Photoshop. I use it like here and there just to do like the odd little thing, but I know a thing or two, okay? This is one of the wonderful photos that Connor helped me out with. So why don't we uh, jump right into it? So as always, I like to duplicate my background layer. Just a good habit. They taught me that one in high school. And then I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to fill it with black. So grab your, uh, your little bucket tool, fill that layer. Now with that layer selected, I'm gonna go up to filter, go to noise, and go to add noise. And I found that 40% was a pretty good sweet spot. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is select that layer and go to screen mode. Where are you? There you are. And look at that, we have rain. I'm just kidding. It just looks like a noisy mess. The next thing we wanna do is just duplicate that layer and hide the previous one. I just like to do this, it's a good habit. You never want to start baking your effects without having backups. Uh, sometimes I'll even make a folder called backups and just throw the uh, disabled layers in there. All right, so now we have our noisy layer. Let's make sure it's selected. Go up to filter, blur, motion blur. Uh, feel free to play around with some of these values. Um, the angle will be like the direction of your rain. Minus 65 degrees seem to work pretty good for me. Uh, and then the distance, 75, seem to look nice. Now we're gonna move over to our adjustments panel here and click levels. And make sure we hit the button here that will only affect the layer below it, which is our noise layer. If you've never used levels before, these tabs are the blacks, midtones, and whites. I'm gonna start by pulling the blacks up a bit and then start pulling the midtones down. I think the whites can kind of just stay where they are. But if we play around with these, we start to see a bit of a rain effect. Now we got something weird going on with the edges, so I'm just going to select our noise layer and increase the size a little bit. If you hold down shift and alt, it will keep proportions and it will scale from the center. Now I'm just gonna do that a little bit to hide the edges. That looks better. But let me just take a minute and play around with this. Okay, so when I zoom in, it kind of revealed a lot more and I don't want that much rain. So I'm gonna keep playing with these midtones. The higher the black value is, the less raindrops you will have. And the midtones is sort of like an opacity slider. So if you bring it up, it disappears. If you bring it down, they start to become more visible. So I'm just trying to find that balance between the two. And I think that looks pretty good around 33 and then like 2.4-ish on the midtones. Now I did notice if I play with the white slider, it seemed to affect the sensitivity of the midtones. When I zoom out, everything seems to disappear. Why don't I just go a little bit heavy handed on this and bring this to 30 and then bring this up a bit. If you're finding your raindrops are too small, feel free to just shift alt scale your rain up a bit. Yeah, that, that's looking a bit nicer. So this rain layer, it looks pretty good. It's sort of like the rain that's passing in front of my body. The rain falling exactly where I'm standing and the focus is also focused on me and these raindrops. What I would like to add is like bigger raindrops that are in the foreground, but they're really blurry. So what I'm gonna do is come back down to my layers. I'm gonna take our backup layer that we made and I'm going to duplicate it and bring it to the very top. And just to make this easier for myself, I'm going to disable my other rain layer. Make this one nice and big. So I'm gonna zoom way out, shift, alt, huge raindrops. I might even go bigger than that. 
And let's zoom back in. Cool. Now let's add our motion blur effect. So that's blur and motion blur. And I think I'll use the same settings here. Now, if you're following along, your computer might start to chug at this point. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just make a selection within this layer, copy it, create a new layer, paste, and that'll just chop off all the excess of that layer that we don't need. Uh, so let's just delete the old layer uh, because we have a backup, we don't need it. Uh, let's throw this layer into screen mode. And we're gonna do the exact same step with the levels and feel free to just play around with the different settings. Oh, and obviously don't forget to only apply to the rain layer. All right, this is looking pretty good. I think I might even make those raindrops even bigger. So let's just pull those right up. Yeah, that's looking good. I like that. And then keep playing with these levels. All right, something around there. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see that a bit better. Now, before we add the blur to this layer, we actually have to compress our effects together. The reason being is that if we blur the noise layer the way it is right now, it's going to mess with all uh, with our screen and the levels effects. So like before, I'm going to duplicate these two layers and disable them and throw that into the backup folder. Now we are good to merge this layer. We'll put that on screen, go back up to filter, blur, and I'm gonna try box blur. I used box blur last time and I liked the way it looked. The pixel radius will be different for everyone depending on the resolution of your photo. But for me, about 18 seems to look pretty good. I like that. I feel like this is starting to look a little bit more like wet snow than it is rain, but I think it still works with the effect. Maybe I'll add a bit more blur to this. You know what, I feel like the scale needs to go up. Yeah, I think I just need to mess with the scale a little bit and play with a little bit of blurriness. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking. You can always play with the opacity to see how that looks. Now there's one very clear problem here. If we take, if we zoom in, we can really see the rain doesn't look natural when it passes, when it's in front of my face, specifically on the smaller, sharper raindrops. And super simple, we're just gonna add a mask to that layer. If you don't know, it is this little uh, rectangle with a circle down at the bottom. Make sure our mask is selected. Go over to our brush tool, make sure black is selected. Um, I'm gonna turn the opacity, I'll just do 100 opacity and just make sure it's like really soft brush. The size will be different for everyone depending on your image. And then just brush where you don't want those harsh raindrops to be. I think that works pretty dang well. And there we have it. If you were scrolling through Instagram and you saw that photo, you probably wouldn't even question the fake ring. It's actually pretty incredible what you can do with just a noise effect and some blur. Uh, let's get a quick little before and after here. Uh, this is the before. This is the after. Before. After. One. Or two. Great, well thank you guys for watching. If you are not subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If this was helpful, hit that like button. And if you just want these raindrop layer PNGs, uh, there's a link down in the description for you to download those. It'll be open for donations. So if you wanna like buy me a coffee, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> cool, well thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.